With the execution of Order 66 and the Sith's successful takeover of the galaxy, the Jedi were forced into hiding. The Empire's official public policy on the Jedi was to kill them all, but privately Palpatine wished to convert some of the remaining Jedi to become his dark side servants, as he did with Anakin Skywalker. So here are five other prominent Jedi that were converted to the dark side and joined the Galactic Empire. First we have Antinus Tremaine. He was originally a Jedi Padawan, an apprentice of Jedi Master Dav Kilanu. During this time as a Jedi, he was fascinated by the dark side and the potential power that it could offer him. A fascination that was amplified when he fought during the Clone Wars. A war that deeply affected him as he saw thousands die around him, with his own master eventually being killed in battle. He was later captured and held prisoner until the war was over. After the war, Antinous was taken to the deep core world Biss, along with many other captured Jedi Padawans and agricultural core members, which were Jedi that never got picked by a master and instead used their powers to grow food rather than fight. Once there, he and the others were put to the test by Darth Vader himself. Vader was ordered by Palpatine to find worthy students to be trained as the Empire's newly created Inquisitors, who would be tasked in hunting down the remaining Jedi. The test involved the Jedi being given wooden staffs and being forced to fight Vader. Vader was able to beat down pretty much all of the Jedi Padawans and agricultural corps members with relative ease, mocking them and bragging about how he destroyed their order. During the test, Antinous took a risk and pushed one of the buttons on Vader's suit, which caused the Sith Lord's breathing system to shut down. Although such an act only caused Vader to gasp for a few seconds before he turned the function back on, it did impress him, causing him to pick Antinous and a few others to become Inquisitors. Now chosen to become an Inquisitor, Antinous was trained in the dark side of the Force by Darth Vader. Once fully trained, Antinous became a spokesman for the New Order's youth group and carried out his duties as one of the Emperor's enforcers. Though whenever he came across a Jedi, Antinous always tried to persuade them to join him and the Empire, arguing that what he was doing was the exact same thing that the Jedi of the past did but just in a new uniform. Most of the Jedi refused, but some did join, including Jedi Master Jarek, who later became a prominent Inquisitor himself. Over time, Antinous was promoted to High Inquisitor for his work, and even thought to be one day an Emperor's Hand, a personal servant of Palpatine. But not everything went well for him, as during his fight against Jedi Knight Corwin Shelve, Antinous lost his arm and right eye. As a result, he had to undergo surgery, to which Vader purposely made sure he received some of the more unattractive prosthetics as a means to lessen the Inquisitor's large ego and to make him look more menacing, as before he was somewhat of a soft-spoken and kind man. But the surgery changed that for the worse. By the time of the Rebellion, Antinous was considered to be one of the Empire's most powerful and dangerous Inquisitors. He was assigned the Imperial Star Destroyer named the Interrogator and was known to treat his crewmen poorly executing all of those who didn't fulfill their duty perfectly. Despite this, he was often successful in chasing down and destroying local rebel cells within star systems, and he was renowned for being one of the best interrogators within the ranks of the Empire. Later, he helped Vader stop a coup against Palpatine, led by Grand Admiral Demetrius Zarin. After that, he was tasked in hunting down a former Inquisitor named Adelric Brandle, who had defected from the Empire. When the Empire started to fall apart following Palpatine and Vader's deaths on the second Death Star, Antinous joined the Imperial Remnant known as the Empire Reborn, which was created by fellow Dark Jedi. He didn't really do much after that, other than discover and reveal the Valley of the Jedi to the leader of the Empire Reborn, which was the place that was immensely strong in the Force. Second, we have Jarek, a male Miraluka, a species that was born blind but was able to see through the Force. As a Jedi Padawan, he was the apprentice of Jedi Master Jocasta Nu. Over the years, Jarek became more and more obsessed with gaining knowledge and exposing himself to ancient lore. By the time he was a Jedi Master, he believed that he had already learned all that the Jedi had to offer, and that him staying in the light limited his potential in gaining more knowledge of the Force. He was later sent on a mission into the unknown regions to collect ancient lost artifacts before the Clone Wars. He would remain there for the entire war and later during the execution of Order 66. When he returned to the main galaxy, he was captured by the Inquisitor Antinous Tremaine, who gave Jarek the choice, join the Empire or die. Seeing an opportunity to finally learn the dark side, 
Jarek eagerly joined and became an Inquisitor himself. As an Inquisitor, Jarek was successful in locating surviving Jedi and turning them to the dark side. As a reward for his successes, he was allowed to pursue Sith lore along with all the Jedi lore within the Jedi archives to his heart's content. As a result, he became one of the Empire's most knowledgeable Sith scholars. As he grew stronger, he believed that he deserved to be Emperor Palpatine's apprentice, and that Darth Vader was unworthy as a Sith Lord. Sometime after coming to that conclusion, he believed that he should be the Emperor. So he began to consolidate as much power as he could within the Empire, as an effort to one day overthrow Palpatine. He did this by converting the Empire's dark side adepts to be more loyal to him rather than Palpatine in return for more power once he became Emperor. He also used his position as High Inquisitor to influence financial backers to convince them to fund him, which in turn made Jarek into a billionaire. Despite his ambition and plot to take over the Empire, Emperor Palpatine was more than aware of what he was trying to do. As a consequence, he removed Jarek's access to the Sith lore and would put him with loyal Imperials to oversee High Inquisitor's actions including Grand Admiral Thrawn, who was at times assigned to Jarek's Star Destroyer, the Vengeance. Another great ambition of his was discovering the Valley of the Jedi, which would have given him an immense amount of power due to the location's strong connection to the Force. Though him discovering the Valley eventually led to his downfall, as he was defeated by a Jedi named Kyle Katarn, who went on to free the trapped souls of the Valley, which gave the place its power. When he died, Jarek's body dissolved into a flash of dark side energy, and he was sent to Chaos, which was the Force Underworld, also known as Hell. Third is Begor Sadet. He was a Jedi Master who survived Order 66 by overpowering and cutting down the clones that were trying to kill him. But despite his skill with the lightsaber and the Force, he was eventually captured by the Empire. As a prisoner, he was taken to Palpatine along with a few other Jedi and was ordered by the new Emperor to fight for his survival. When he and the other Jedi refused and attempted to attack Palpatine, he witnessed the power of the dark side, as the Sith Lord cut down three of them with ease. With only he and another Jedi alive, Begor attacked and killed her, knowing it was the only way that he would survive. As a reward for his obedience, he was allowed to live and became a dark side adept for the Empire. He served the Empire by going undercover, Pretending to be a Jedi survivor, he was able to infiltrate resistance groups that smuggled and protected remaining Jedi. During one of his undercover missions, his true allegiance to the Sith was discovered by a pair of Jedi, who then attacked and subdued him. The bound and gagged Dark Jedi was then discovered by Darth Vader when he came after the same Jedi Begor was infiltrating. When ungagged, Begor began telling him who he was and what his purpose was. Believing it to be a trick, or seeing him as a potential threat, Vader cut him down. Fourth is Sardoth. He was a Jedi Knight and the apprentice to Lycan, who actually fell to the dark side and ended up introducing its power to Sardoth. Although his master was eventually arrested for his crimes against the Jedi, Sardoth remained in the Order, but the dark side that he was introduced to still lingered within him. Shortly before the Clone Wars, Sardoth was contacted by Palpatine's secret agents and was convinced to join the Sith lore by secretly aiding him. As a result, he was spared from Order 66 and the Jedi Purge that ensued afterwards. He remained an enforcer for the Empire until the Sith decided to betray him for unknown reasons. This forced him to go into hiding and to change his identity, to which he eventually ended up operating a casino on the planet Ahakista. He also went on to collect illegal lightsabers and ran an underground black market. Over time, the Empire came to Ahakista to construct a commanding post to coordinate its navy. During this time, a guy named Darka came into contact with Sardoth, and he noticed that this man held his former master's lightsaber. Wishing to get it back and to add it to his collection, Sardoth attacked the rebel mercenary. This was the first time in a long time that Sardoth had used the Force in such a manner, which ended up being his undoing, as Vader was on Ahakista at the time and sensed it. He came to the tunnel that the two were dueling in and confronted the fallen Jedi. During the duel, Sardoth asked why he was betrayed despite his loyalty, to which Vader responded that if he was worthy, then he would have remained an ally. He then cut down Sardoth, as he had done to countless Jedi before him. Fifth is Ma. He was a Boltrunian Jedi Knight, and due to his species nature, he was an overly selfish individual, to the point where he didn't even want to take on a Padawan, 
because he just wanted to focus solely on himself. He was a part of the Jedi Shadow Organization, which sought out to destroy everything that was connected to the dark side and their followers. Probably because he was on some remote planet searching for dark side forces, he survived Order 66 in the initial phase of the Jedi Purge. Though it wasn't long until the Empire caught up with him. The High Inquisitor Jarek soon tracked him down and was able to convert him to the dark side and convince him to join the Empire. He became one of Jarek's seven dark Jedi that were loyal to him and were tasked in helping him find the Valley of the Jedi. At one point, Jarek and the seven dark Jedi were able to capture Jedi Master Q-Ron. During their interrogation of the Jedi, Q-Ron was able to make a quick attack and successfully was able to cut Maw in half before being struck down himself. Although losing his legs, Maw was able to survive the injury, but was forced to have a repulsor lift be surgically implanted onto his lower torso to allow for movement. He was able to use the force to aid his ability to levitate and was eventually able to master it to such a degree that he could use it to his advantage during duels. Though despite this new development and mastery of using the Force to levitate in such great speeds, Maul was defeated and killed by Jedi Master Kyle Katarn. We want to thank James Mom from Twitter for suggesting this video topic, as well as everyone else who requested this video on YouTube. And as always, may the Force be with you.